Today I'm going to be going around and giving you guys a bit of an update on the baby chicks and the greenhouse and also a new idea that I've just come up with. Morning everyone, it's Danny here from the Young Family Homestead. Just got through mowing the lawns. I smashed it, I mowed all the grass, we're on five acres, mowed all the lawns and paddocks and wherever, and got it all done in a day and about two hours, I reckon. I reckon I could have got it all done in a day, but I ran out of petrol yesterday, so. Today, I'm gonna be going around and giving you guys a bit of an update on uh, the baby chicks and uh, the greenhouse and also a new idea that I've just come up with. So anyway, we'll go over here and so I just thought I'd get you guys out because the greenhouse is being irrigated at the moment. After we installed the irrigation the other day, we've uh, found that the greenhouse got way too hot in there. We have raise the door up and we're just keeping it up like that for now because there's no more seeds that are sprouting they're all they're all done sprouting now they're just waiting to go in into the garden bed which is another thing i'm going to show you guys in a minute. if you haven't seen the other video we've got a little automatic water timer down here and that just goes down in a pipe down through there and i put all the irrigation into the greenhouse there i did a whole other video on that so if you guys want to check that out feel free to. All the seedlings are going well in there. But they're well overdue from going in the garden. I know that much. So everything's going good. I don't really want to go in there and show you guys because I don't want to get wet at the moment. But this is the other, this is the other thing. The raised garden bed. 7.5 give or take long and 700 millimeters deep we made it so we could quite easily reach the other side so that's one thing that one major thing that i've learned from raised garden beds in the past is always make them too deep and uh it just it just becomes more of a pain when you have to go harvest or get a fork in there to turn anything over and this is going to be way way better and i've made it at waist height pretty much waist height so that is another thing that is going to be a major benefit because usually it'll be half that and you've got to bend down so this garden bed is going to be awesome once we get it filled we've actually on that note i've still got what i filled it with was forest mulch it was 25 bucks per cube and which is in my opinion pretty good price the, i did the calculations of this garden bed and I think it takes around about four, four and a half cubes to fill it. It's good, isn't it? Unless you needed to go to the toilet, then I'm sorry. Go up here and check out these little chicks. For anyone that doesn't know, we've got more chicks, eggs, sorry, in the incubator, ready to hatch. But these guys have hatched. They're pretty cute. Pretty cute. And it's a beautiful day outside. I'm gonna show you the berry time. Last time Summer was over, she came in and raided the berries, so I don't know how much is in here now. I've got one mulberry there. The rest, oh, we've got another another batch coming through. That's good. Some blueberries. They're green. Green. Oh, nearly ready. Oh. As soon as summer gets here, 
she'll find them, she'll eat them. Like these ones here. Got a heap, heap of blueberries coming on. Oh, look at that bunch right there. Oh, now I was, that's what I was gonna show you guys. I was gonna show you. So before we got here to our property here in Delaney's Creek, and between when we didn't get our property in Kilcoy and moving in here, we had a great idea to buy an old caravan because once we couldn't get the block in Kilcoy anymore, uh, we were just, we, we still didn't want to live in, in suburbia. So our next plan was to deck out a caravan and uh, buy a, a block somewhere and put the caravan on it and live in it while we while we we're um, building a house or something but and it'd be completely off grid but then we ended up with this house on this five acre property and I couldn't picture us anywhere else so this this is a bit of an eyesore here all of this it's a bit of an eyesore but it is sort of hidden up the back of the up the back of the our house here so you, you don't really it's it is out of the way but since we're here and this is no longer required and it's just sitting there wasting space I'm sure we'd find something else to put there and probably another berry tunnel a chicken coop or something no doubt if that wasn't there something else would be but instead of getting it hauled away thinking what I'll do is dismantle all the sheeting and all the aluminium that's on the inside and build chicken tractors or chicken coops with it because why not have another chicken coop what's another chicken coop crazy chicken guy never have enough chickens or chicken coops the reason I was thinking about that is because I have a chicken tractor down here that I built, chicken trailer, sorry, that I can tow behind my ride on mower. And we move them every week or every second week onto new pasture because we've got our mobile electric poultry netting. They love it. Lucy loves it. Lucy the goose. The main reason though is to keep the pests to a minimum so we don't have to you know, like we don't have to give our chickens any sort of chemicals or anything like that. We can just let them be the best chickens they can be. Anyhow, sidetracked. I built that chicken trailer down there, and it it's it's heavy because it's it's got roofing iron on the top. It's got roofing iron on the sides. It's made out of quite thick timber, so that that's a bit. It's heavy. And, and there's no real nice way to pull it unless you use the ride on mower. And if I'm not here and Megan's got to move it by herself, I just can't imagine Megan being eight months pregnant moving a chicken trailer around. And the last thing we want to do is neglect them and then they end up with disease after all this time we've done so well. So my thinking is to build, instead of using roofing iron, use caravan aluminium, like the, the sheeting, and use aluminium instead of timber. It's gonna be lighter, so it could have, a, there's more of a chance that it could potentially, I guess, blow away. I'm thinking of ways that I can potentially anchor it down once it's in that spot, like that one down there. If it's made out of aluminium and the caravan sheeting, that aluminium stuff, then it's, it'll last forever. Like it won't, eventually that chicken coop down there will, will rust. Not only that, it, it, all the timber will maybe potentially rot. Yeah, I was thinking about building a couple of Joel Salatin style chicken tractors in our back paddock down here and have meat chickens in them. So at the moment, we've got chickens down here and the roosters end up going in our freezer and we they're the chickens that we process and eat not silky chickens and that, but more so the Sussex and the Wyandots, because they're a bit of a dual purpose kind of bird anyway. You get a bit of meat out of them, but they're not an actual meat bird. They're not specifically bred for meat. We do plan, however, 
hopefully we should have our own meat chickens here on the property and to start with we'll probably process around about 50. We're going to end up speaking with our family and if they want any of these chickens that we're going to process and maybe selling a few birds and so I just want to do, do it for the learning experience as well as I guess the nice fresh free range meat. I mean you can't beat that. You can never beat meat raised on your own property or vegetables grown in your own garden. But yeah anyway I just thought I'd show you guys what's going on, what my plans are about building a chicken tractor and show you a little update on the chicks. We've still got, I think, six eggs in the incubator inside. They're supposed to hatch next time I'm away. So, yeah, and the greenhouse. So we've got a few little things going on around. Another thing, I'm getting a new trailer. I bought, for, for the longest of time now, I've borrowed Megan's dad's trailer, which has just gotten to a point now where we need a trailer pretty much here all the time because we use a trailer so often. But I'm supposed to be picking up that this week or this weekend. So I'm hoping that I can pick up that trailer, fill it full of the mulch and the mushroom compost, bring it here, fill up that garden bed and get those seedlings in there. So I might show you guys that in the next vlog. Until then, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We uh, talk about everything farming and homesteading, uh, chickens, vegetable gardens, greenhouses, chicken tractors, chicken trailers. Until the next one, we'll see you then. Bye.